All right, now what we're going to do is basically put a couple things together. So we're going to see if we can't uh, actually find the zeros of a polynomial function. So what we're going to do first is we'll actually do the same thing we've been doing. We're going to use the rational zero theorem. And uh, so possible rational zeros is what we're looking for. So uh, we'll do the factors of our constant over the factors of our leading coefficient. So what this will give us is plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 6. Now at this point, if we were doing this by hand, what we could actually do is go ahead and try 1 and negative 1, 2 and negative 2, 3 and negative 3, and then a 6 and negative 6, in the hopes of actually finding a 0. But what we're going to do now is uh, see if we can't look a little bit into... Uh, how we can use our graphing utility. So here I've typed in our nice little equation. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the graph. So here's the graph of our polynomial. And a lot of times, especially on this example, how all of our possibilities are integers, we're actually going to look at uh, the table. So I'm going to hit second graph and look at our table. And what I'm looking for in our table is our y-intercepts. And as you guys know from your y-intercepts, uh, when I've been taught, taught you this earlier, is what we're looking for is a y-value of zero. So hopefully you can see one right here, uh, where 2 is equal to 0, negative 1 is equal to 0, and negative 3 is equal to 0. Now one thing that's going to cause you uh, a little bit of some issues, if you rely too much on your uh, graphing utility and not anything else, is there can easily be some mistakes. You might have typed your function in wrong or something like that. So it's always good to have multiple representations, and that way you can determine what your zeros are and I just completely forgot to look what they were. So let's go back. So negative 3, negative 1, and positive 2 were the zeros that we found. So negative 3, negative 1, and a positive 2. So as you can see, uh, all those zeros were actually in the possible uh, rational zeros that we found. So negative 1 would be from here, and then, and then positive 2, and then negative 3. So there you go, example number 1.